En question. Président, please be seated. Reprise de l'audience. The chambers give the floor to the defense team for Mr. Nunchi to put question to this witness. You may not proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good morning again, Madam Witness. Uh, before the break, um, you told us that um, all villages from uh, Balang. Uh, commune, Balang sub-district, were situated uh, next to each other and that the sleeping quarters were uh, set next to each other. Um, would you be able to remember how many villages uh, from Balang sub-district were next to each other? There were many villages in Balang commune. Il y avait un grand nombre de villages dans la commune de Balang. Commune, Tropeng Chray, Prais Rongai, Trok, Prais Tatrao, Doing communes. Doing, toutes ces communes là. Um, maybe. And there was one more, J Mongol Commune. J Mongol. J Mongol Commune was also in Balang uh, Commune. Or rather, J Mongol Village was also in Balang Commune. Um, the village. But the people from the village, from um, La gens village du chief Ao Hao, um, du village dont le chef était just Ao want to be Hao. sure, were they in your eyesight? Were you able to see with your own eyes uh, de the people of that village de uh, working? Yeux, les gens de ce village travaillaient? Answer uh, yes, I could see. We were working in uh, different areas, but we could see each other. Uh, before the break, uh, and I believe also yesterday, you were asked some questions about uh, an accident, um, the moving of soil. Um, did this accident that you were asked about and that you gave question, uh, that you answered um, uh, about, did that happen in um, the segment uh, where the people from Place Round Village were working? Dans le segment ou sur le segment où travaillaient les gens du village de Place Round? Answer, no. It, it was the segment which uh, other villagers were working. We were working close to each other in different segments. Okay, um, thank you. I would like to now uh, read an excerpt. From no, before I do that, I will ask you a general question. Um, were you able to observe working conditions of the people working from other villages next to you? Were you able to see um, how they were working, um, how they were treated, etc.? Were you able to make any observations on the treatment of people from other villages? Answer. I did not make any notice. We were trying to carry us uh, to complete uh, the quota and for other workers they would do the same. Um,
would have happened that other groups of vi uh, workers from other villages uh, would have a break or would sit down to rest a little bit and that only your village, the people from your village, from your group were continuing their work or was, when there was a break, um, everyone, everyone who was working was having the same break. We were having the same break when we heard the bell rang. And after we heard the bell rang again, we would go back to work. The break time would be signaled by a bell. And, and that bell that you heard, is that the same bell that the villagers and the workers from other villages from Balang district heard? Is that the same announcement for all the workers from the, vi the various villages from Balang district? Answer, yes, the same bell that was used. And when we heard the bell ringing, uh, we would sit down and take a short break. And after a short while, uh, we heard the bell ringing again, and we resumed our work. And the bell for the start of the work uh, of any particular day, is that the same bell for all the people from the various villages working next to each other? It was the same bell. And we would sit down and take a rest after we heard the bell ringing. Would it be fair to say that the working hours were the same for all the villages, all the village workers from um, Balang district? Everybody had the same uh, working hours? Answer, yes, that is correct. Generally, we had the same working hours. Um, I would like to read to you now um, an excerpt from a statement that um, Ao Hao, the person that we, we just talked about, gave to the investigators of um, the investigating judge. Um, Mr. President, that is E3 slash 5255, English ERN 00250046, uh, French ERN 00277227, and Khmer 00239909. Um, Madam Witness, I'm, re I'm going to read the answer that Ao Hao gave. Um, to a question of the investigators, and then I'm going to ask you to give a reaction. Question. When did working hours begin and end? Answer. They began work at 6.30 a.m. and continued until 12 a.m. They continued from 2 until 5 p.m. and from 7 until 10 p.m. To complete the dam construction plan, they had us work from 4 until 11 a.m. and we continued from 2 until 5 p.m. and from 7 until uh, 10 p.m. Now my first, I will go a little slower. My first question is about uh, the lunch break. Is he correct when he talks about the lunch break uh, between uh, 11 o'clock and 2 p.m.
Answer yes, it's correct what he said. Oui, ce qu'il dit est exact. But after the break time, we walk pause. from our work site to our dining hall. It took uh, us until 12 p.m. to reach uh, that place. And after we had lunch, uh, we returned back to work and uh, we had to travel a little bit away from uh, that place that we were eating. So we, it, we took uh, much time to walk. We heard a bell rang at 11 o'clock and uh, we uh, took a little bit much time to travel from our work site to the dining hall. I understand, um, but is his statement correct that the lunch break was between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m.? Is, is he right when he says that? Commencer à 11 heures et se terminer à 14 heures. Yes, he is correct. Um, now he and, and also uh, another witness who testified uh, just before you are testifying um, said that um, there was a 15-minute break um, in the morning session. So everybody started working and then after one hour, one and a half hours, maybe two, there was a 15-minute break. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. After the bell rang, uh, we took a short break and after we heard the second, the bell rang for the second time, we resumed our work. We took a short break to drink water and after we heard the second bell uh, ringing, we would resume our work. Now, I have a question about um, working when it was dark. There are witnesses who, are, who have also worked at the dam site who say that working at night uh, was not a regular thing, was, not was, was, was occasional, wasn't happening every night. Um, is that true or is that not true? Answer. When the reservoir was being built, uh, we worked day and night. And when we were digging uh, the soil for, the, the, uh, for building the canals, uh, we worked only at daytime. And during the rainy season, when uh, the uh, dam uh, broke, Lorsque we had to work at night to, uh, to build uh, the dam or to repair the dam. So would it then be fair to say that working at night was not standard but only in special occasions? Is that correct or am I not summarizing it well? Yeah. Answer, yes, that is correct. Um, in terms of um, sleeping uh, conditions at night, um, were you able together with the people from your village uh, to bring to the sleeping quarters at the dam um, material for sleeping, such as bamboo mats, hammocks, pillows, etc. Were you able to bring those um, that's 
those materials from your own village. Du travail dans les dortoirs. Est-ce que vous pouviez ramener ce matériel de votre village? Answer no. Non. We could not. Nous ne pouvions pas. We had a backpack. And in the backpack, there were two sets of clothes. We used the backpack as a pillow. Le sac en guise de coussin. Everyone uh, would do the same thing. Tout le monde faisait pareil. And the mat was made from uh, very small sticks. Et le so, matelas était for young fait people, de they could sleep well with uh, that uh, mat, but uh, matelas, for me, I could moi, not sleep well. Je ne pouvais pas dormir correctement. And as I said, young people could uh, go into sleep everywhere dit, they uh, found. Les jeunes arrivaient à dormir n'importe où. Um, now I would like to ask you a very small question about um, the quota. Um, in relation to the soil that had to be carried. You said um, the quota was one cubic meter per person. Um, are you sure it was uh, one cubic meter per person? Are you sure it was one cubic meter per person? Answer, yes, that is true. Réponse, oui, exact. The unit chief Le chef gave the quota, set the quota for every worker. They used the uh, string to measure the corde, land for us to work. And if anyone could not uh, meet the quota at daytime, day they had si to work at night. Now, Madam Witness, I would like to read a few excerpts um, from our House statement, uh, his testimony before the trial chamber uh, last week. Um, and with each, on each excerpt, I would like to ask you uh, how the situation was in uh, your unit. Um, Mr. President, I will be referring to um, um, Trial day 283, um, as of 9 minutes four, uh, 54, minutes 54. Um, five, uh, sorry, 20 May uh, last, last May week. La Question, Question. Um, being put to An Hao uh, is as follows. Did you or any of your four group leaders ever ordered somebody who was a new person to work any harder than somebody who was a base person? And then An Hao answers, no, I never imposed such a condition. We had the same work conditions. It did not mean that new people worked harder than the base people. We had the same work condition to achieve our plan. My question, was this the same situation within your unit? in respect of the treatment of new people suivante. within your unit. Est la même chose dans votre unité? I say yes, everyone had the same working condition. New, I mean new people and base people. Everyone was equal in their work. We received uh, the same uh, quota or similar quota. Okay, thank you. Um, now at 9.54, um, the question to our how is as follows, and I quote again. Um, now within these six months that you and your four group leaders supervised uh, these hundred people from your village. Did you ever make a decision to send any of these hundred people to the upper echelon for not working hard enough? Did you ever request disciplinary measures to be taken against any of those hundred individuals? Uh, and then Mr. Aohau answers, as for the four group chiefs and I, we 
never send our own workers for disciplinary measures or actions, and we would try to resolve the work issues in our groups so that we could finish the work. My question, what Al Hau describes here as to disciplinary measures, was this the same uh, in your group, in your unit? En termes de mesures disciplinaires, était-ce la même situation dans votre groupe ou dans votre unité Answer, Réponse yes. oui. It was the same in uh, my unit. We unité. received the same plan in the Balang commune. Dans la commune de Balang. So if uh, we were part Donc, of the special mobile unit, si we had the same condition. So basically, to sum it up, uh, if there was an issue of uh, not working hard enough, you made sure that you solved it within your own unit, within, within your own group. Is that correct? So it's the same situation as uh, the villagers of Aohau. Answer, yes, that is correct. Those who did not uh, go to work, uh, to work or were considered lazy, they were sent for refashioning. So it was the same uh, for everyone, even though we were in special mobile units. Well, maybe it's my misunderstanding, but it seems that you're not saying the same thing now. Um, Mr. Aohau is has testified that if there was any issue of disciplinary um, problems, he and his four group leaders would solve it within his own group. He wouldn't go uh, to complain to the upper echelon. My question to you is, was that the same situation within your unit? If there was an issue, the group leaders would solve it by themselves and would not go to the upper echelon. Answer, no. And if anyone did not meet the quota of the plan, they would be sent to other areas. So our hall just stated that. Very well. Can you give me any concrete example of a worker in your unit um, who didn't work hard enough and was subsequently uh, sent by the unit leaders um, to the upper echelon. Can you give me any concrete names? Anka reprimanded him. He was still lazy. He uh, got uh, the uh, food ration, although he was uh, reprimanded, but when he did not deter, he was uh, detained in the wooden cage. I saw him while I uh, was, I was uh, going into the forest to relieve myself. I saw a guard at that place, at the place where three was detained. At first I did not know where he went because he was gone. Uh, this Person three it did not take his uh, work seriously. I was going to come to three and, and, and the cage situation. Um, but is three the only example that you can give us, or are there, were there other people? Answer. There was another person. Female Liep or Neri Liep. After refashioning, she deterred. She was released. After one day uh, refashioning, she was refashioned because uh, uh, this refashioning was meant to deter others from uh, following uh, Neri's step. Now, are you able to make 
because I, I was going to come to Liri as well, because you testified about her situation défense, yesterday. But are you able to make a comparison between discipline within your group, your unit, your village, and the adjacent villages? Were you able to speak to workers from other villages about how things went? Answer, no. no. I could not. I could only communicate with my uh, villagers in my unit. We could smile at each other, but we were not allowed autres, to chit chat because we bavarder. had to work. We could not take a break ne to shake hands and talk to each other. I, I will, as I said, revisit um, Leary and Tree, um, but I would now like to finish um, the, state, the, the testimony that Ao Hao gave and again asking uh, your reaction. Uh, at one point, um, 9.55, the same day, he was asked the question, um, now, at the work site, when the five groups of 20 were working, were there militia or military people watching and controlling your group of 100 people? He testified, uh, he answered as follows. At the work site, actually, we had those who provided security and safety for all workers. Question. Is my understanding correct that the militia who were walking there were there because of external security problems? and not to supervise or instruct the workers. That is correct, isn't it? The answer, militia men did not come to watch the workers. Actually, they came to secure the external security. President, please hold on, Madame Winner. You may not proceed. Uh, let call all your for civil parties. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Une remarque, car le témoin est revenu sur ses dépositions à l'audience. Il a indiqué, et j'ai les, uh, les transcripts quelque part, mais je les cite de mémoire, il a indiqué que les soldats de la zone surveillaient les travailleurs. Donc il y a une différence entre le PV d'audition que cite notre confrère et les déclarations qu'a fait le témoin à l'audience. Donc j'aurais aimé que mon confrère reflète les deux propositions et éventuellement fasse réfléchir, réagir euh, la témoin à ces deux propositions. Est-ce que les soldats de la zone étaient là pour garder les installations ou surveiller les travailleurs, comme le témoin Aouha l'a dit lors de son témoignage it's, it's now my time, I think, uh, Mr. President, to um, confront Monsieur the witness with, with excerpts. This is a very specific a excerpt, um, and I would like a reaction. Uh, so I think I'm able, uh, uh, during cross-examination, to do this. So, um, Uh, we are allowing the latest questions, but would like Mais to take the opportunity to remind Council or to invite Council to ask open questions. That's not about the last questions, that's about preceding questions. Instead of feeding answers to the witness by confronting her with statements to subjects that she hasn't been talking before. Again, that does not refer to the last questions, but to the ones before. Proceed. Cela ne s'applique pas à cette question-ci, mais aux questions précédentes. 
If you can explain me the difference, uh, Judge Fence, between prosecution reading from her own statement and then asking to confirm, and me reading from an excerpt of testimony of another witness and then ask the reaction, I think that is perfectly the same thing. Okay. I'm learning every day. Um, Madam Witness, I just read you. Um, an excerpt, I will read it to you again and then ask your reaction. Um, our hound, I will, I will not read it exactly, I will phrase it. Our hound is, our hound is saying that the soldiers or the militia men who were walking at the dam site were there to protect the dam site against external danger. So not there to control the people, but to make sure that the workers could do their work safely. Now, what is your reaction to this? Answer. The militia man uh, was were there uh, to les les to guard uh, the uh, members of uh, special mobile units uh, to walk into the forest. Il fallait qu'il les empêche d'aller dans la forêt. Have you ever spoken to any of those soldiers? Have you ever asked any of those soldiers uh, what their instructions were from their Commanding officers. No. Réponse. I did not non. even dare to look at the first. Je n'osais même pas aller regarder, regarder, regarder If I saw the person, I would uh, avoid him. Lorsque j'en voyais un, je l'évitais. Si Même si je voulais aller me soulager dans la forêt. Would you be able to describe um, how many meters the forest was away décrire à quelle from, distance, à combien de mètres um, se situait la forêt? The particular site that you were working. Du how site far was the forest away? À quelle distance se trouvait cette forêt? It was réponse. about 50 meters away. That is the closest, or it could be a little bit further, depending on the location loin. at the construction site. Mètres, mais à Sometimes du uh, there will be a rice field in between il the dam or construction and the forest. La forêt à Do you remember? Question. Those soldiers standing 50 Vous meters away, or a little bit more. Um, how far apart they were standing uh, next to each other? Was there a space between the first soldier and then the next soldier? So let's say 30, 50 meters between one soldier and then the next soldier. Can you give us a little bit more details as to where they were standing exactly? And how many they were and how far apart they were. Pouvez-vous nous dire également combien ils étaient, à quelle distance ils se situaient? They were about 100 to 150 meters apart. Ils étaient situés à 100, 150 mètres l'un de l'autre. Uh, usually, two or three soldiers uh, would général, be assigned to guard the workers for each commune. For example, two or three soldiers for the uh, Balang commune and two or three other soldiers for uh, another uh, commune. Et deux, trois soldats pour une autre and commune. the main purpose was uh, for them to guard near the forest and to deter workers not to stay too long in the forest when they went to relieve themselves. So usually we would just go relieve ourselves and when, when it was done we returned to the, the work site. Do you remember also seeing soldiers not looking at the dam site but looking 
to the other side, whether somebody was actually coming out of the forest. Pour voir ce qui pouvait éventuellement sortir de la forêt. No, I did not. Um, Mr. President, with your leave now, I would like um, to have that second clip shown again. Uh, but this time, I'm also looking at the AV boot um, with volume, uh, if that is possible, and then uh, ask the witness some questions about what she, what she saw on the video. Le President, yes, the, you can do that. And the AV boot, please play the clip as requested by Defense Counsel Copper. Just to be sure, it's the second clip Entre which copé. was played. Uh, and with the volume up, please. Et avec le son, s'il vous plaît. It's E3 slash 3049R. Maybe it's, I'm just thinking out loud, it's because this Maître is a Copé, compiled um, clip because I just asked my um, uh, colleague to listen to it and he, he did indeed hear um, sound from a female son. voice Il a explaining la voix femme uh, what we can see on uh, that footage. Ce qui sur cette vidéo. Um, so maybe if that is all right with you, Mr. President, uh, request again, but just then the original uh, E3 slash 3049R and not the clip that was prepared by the prosecution. Look, I am not me not president. Not, uh, uh, Councilor Copper, uh, please identify the time marker for that the video clip in order to ensure that the proper segment uh, will be uh, displayed on screen. Monsieur le Président, si je peux me permettre, la deuxième vidéo qui a été projetée porte la référence E3 bar 3014R et je crois que Maître Copé fait référence au contraire à la première E3 bar 3049R. Je crois effectivement que c'est dans la première vidéo qu'il y a une voix de femme et qui n'intervient pas dans les deux premières minutes que nous avons projetées, mais plus tard dans cette vidéo. C'est de mémoire parce que je n'ai pas pu I'm revoir cette vidéo à la pause. Peut-être que ceci uh, éclaire un petit peu mon confrère. To uh, the witness after the break. Um, I think the questions that I have now can also um, be put to the witness um, just based on the footage that she saw. Um, Madam witness, you saw uh, workers 
um, working at the dam, which presumably is the 1st January dam. Are you able to tell us where about soldiers were standing in relation to the workers that you saw on, on the clip? Um, were there also soldiers in between um, the people that you saw walking back and forth? Or were the soldiers far away and you cannot see them um, on the footage that you just saw? They were standing a guard far uh, from the workers. They were standing near the edge of the forest, and they did not involve themselves or near or with the workers at the at dam construction. So, if in your unit. Question. Somebody was tired and, and for whatever reason stopped working. It was the problem of um, the unit chief. It was the unit chief who had to solve the situation. And soldiers had nothing to do with this. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Réponse, oui, c'est exact. It was the unit chief responsibility to les chefs qui be overall in charge. And as for the soldiers, they uh, stood guard at the edge of the forest, although they did not uh, do anything to the workers, or they beat the workers up. No, they did not do that, although they were armed, but they were a symbol of deterrent. So that workers would not uh, pretend to stay longer in the forest when they went to relieve themselves. Is that the only thing you ever saw them do in relation to workers? Not allow them to go relieve themselves in, in the forest? Les empêcher de rester trop longtemps dans la forêt lorsqu'ils allaient s'y soulager. Yes, that's the only reason. C'est la seule raison. Thank you, Madam Witness. Maître Copé, merci, Madame le Témoin. Now I would like to turn to um, three and um, the other person. In relation to disciplinary measures um, taken against these two people from your unit, was it um, Tanem who was the one who was responsible for taking disciplinary measures against uh, um, Lip and Tree. Yes, it was Réponse. the unit chief who oui, chef de refreshed uh, the workers. And if uh, the workers could not be refreshed, then they si would be handed over to the security. It means that if the person did not uh, conform si to the instruction, they were handed ordres, over to the security in the village. Now, in your statement um, to the investigators, you said that Tanem at that time was still alive. Do you know if he today is still alive?
réponse. It was the name, not the Tanum, who was the unit chief at the uh, at the damp construction site, and he passed away because of his advanced age. Again, uh, I apologize for my pronunciation, Madam Question, Witness. Um, can you Madame explain to us? Do you remember what kind of person this Tanyem was? Ce dont vous vous souvenez à propos de Tanyem? De quel genre de personne s'agissait-il? Réponse. I uh, do not know what to say. Je ne sais pas trop quoi vous dire. Was the uh, former chief at the work site, and of course he only punished those who did not comply with the instructions. As for the workers, including myself, who followed the instructions, then we uh, he did not do anything to us. But was this Tanyem an unreasonable, um, Question. cruel guy? Tanyem était-il quelqu'un de très raisonnable, de cruel? De quel genre de personne s'agissait-il? I don't know whether he was uh, Réponse, cruel or not. Je ne sais pas s'il était cruel ou pas. I only uh, know that if the uh, workers disobeyed his Tout instructions, savais, then the si workers, then he would impose uh, disciplinary action against uh, those workers. Lui qui des now, when Tanyem uh, disciplined Tree and Lip, were you present um, at the conversation that he had with to start with Tree, did you hear him say what Tree had Tree? done wrong? Um, Tree ce avait mal and did you subsequently um, watch or um, evidence? Uh, sorry, you saw the reaction of Tree. Vu so were you Tree able to uh, hear the conversation between Niem and uh, Tree when Tree was disciplined? Et tri, lorsque Tri a fait l'objet de mesures disciplinaires. Now I did not uh, overhear anything. Non, je n'ai rien I entendu. I only uh, saw him uh, taken away, je and I heard that the reason for that because he failed uh, to comply uh, with the instructions les as other workers uh, did. Contrairement aux autres ouvriers. But I did not hear any arguments or any uh, shouting amongst them. Dispute, je ne les ai pas crier. Um, but who told you that that was Question. the reason that Tree was disciplined? That he didn't obey orders. Qui, qui Who told you this? Que c'est parce que Tri n'avait pas respecté les consignes qu'il faisait l'objet de mesures disciplinaires. The first workers uh, within the uh, mobile unit. Les ouvriers de l'unité mobile. Usually, uh, when people disappeared, we would uh, whisper to one another, another asking for the reason. And that's how I learned about it, although I did not know the actual time when he was taken away. And as you know, we were busy working, and it was not my role to just be there and see what was going on. But I myself was busy concentrating and doing my work. But the person who told you, was that, was that a worker who also was guessing the reason as to why Tri was disciplined? De pour raison Tri avait été ainsi de, de President, witness, please hold on. And the Le deputy international co-prosecutor, you have the floor. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Il me semble que l'on glisse de plus en plus vers des suggestions insérées dans les questions. Ce n'est pas une question du tout ouverte. Euh, la réponse se trouve pratiquement dedans. Euh, je pense tout de même que je voudrais pouvoir reformuler cette question. Merci. Um, I think I'm entitled to Maître ask Coppé, uh, je pense the knowledge avoir le of the person um, that told the witness. De I'm, I agree, I'm moving a little faster than uh, I should, but um, so I think I'm entitled to ask this question. Le président. Defense Council, you uh, can you can put such a question, Maître, but uh, you need to make sure that the, the response from the witness is of a certain knowledge and not just a presumption of, of what he she might have heard or learned. I will rephrase, Mr. President. Um, the person who told you. About the reason of La disciplinary action against Tree. Did this person tell you how this person came to know the reason for disciplinary action against Tree? No. Réponse: Non. I did not know uh, about that because it was the, the work of the unit chief. And as I told you, we the workers would uh, whisper to one another asking about the reasons for the disappearance of uh, someone. And usually we learned about that from each other. For example, if the person was uh, taken away and placed in a cage at the edge of the forest. And and Ces informations de, as de I de said earlier, when I saw him being placed in a cage, when I, dit, was, uh, when I went to relieve myself, then I returned cage, uh, back to the work site, and uh, the workers who were still standing at the forest. forest. Now let's talk about those um, what about that cage Question. that you saw, those Je cages that you saw. Um, do you know? Whether you are the only one within your unit that has seen this cage in the forest? Ont également vu cette cage dans la forêt. Other workers also uh, saw the cage, as at the time I was uh, walking to the forest uh, with two or three other workers who worked uh, with me. And I could not uh, tell you whether everyone saw the, uh, the cage as uh, I saw it. Um, Question. Of all the people who have given testimony in, in this case, both Parmi before the investigators and now before the uh, trial chamber, chambre, nobody has said that he or she has seen any cages. Um, do you have an explanation for why that is? I, I will rephrase. Um, do you know if your colleague Ud Hun has ever si seen any cage in the forest. Yes, the person oui. did. As I said, there were a few of us uh, when we went to relieve Comme ourselves in the forest, we saw the cage, and after we, we did it with the, the Relieving, then we return nous to work. Nous avons repris le um, did you ever see walking around at the dam site um, people who were Avez -vous jamais vu what they des called surveying? Sur le chantier pour so not normal workers, but people who were measuring the land. Pas, donc, Have you ever seen any of those surveyors walking around? Avez-vous vu ce genre de personnes se déplacer sur les chantiers?
It was the responsibility of the group chief and the unit chief, respectively, who conducted the uh, land measurement for the uh, group or the unit members. And uh, there was no one in higher in a higher position who came Personne to do that uh, land measurement. I see. Um, can you explain to me um, how Question. Merci. it was possible that you saw the cage? Because earlier you testified that if you had to relieve cage? yourself in the forest, soldiers would stop you. Um, stop you from going into the forest. Do you remember how it was possible this time that you apparently slipped by the soldiers? The soldiers went to gather at other locations Les in the forest. And when I went through the forest, I did not see soldiers as uh, they were not at the place that I went in, but Et they were somewhere else. And they did not come and involve themselves with the workers at the dam work site. Um, let's move on now, Madam Witness, to another person, uh, a woman called Leap. Were you present when Tanyim disciplined Leap um, at any time? Yes, I was Réponse. there too. Oui, so présente. the person uh, was uh, refashioned Cette a été and réputée. reformed. Then the same food ration was given, and there was uh, no sanction or Ensuite, a punishment taken against uh, that individual. But, but do you, you remember Tanyim telling vous -vous to leave? the reason for her refreshing, refreshing. Des raisons qui auraient été avancées par Taniem pour expliquer à Lip qu'elle devait être réprimandée ou rééduquée. No. Réponse. I was not told no. about the reason. On ne m'a pas, pas parlé de ces what raisons. What she said was that you, fellow female comrades, uh, do not follow the example of that Niri or woman. Que nous ne devions pas suivre l'exemple. So would it then be fair to say that uh, neither for tree nor for Question. deep, you know Cela veut the reasons que vous for? Pas su pour quelle raison uh, their discipline tri et for them being disciplined. You do, know, you do not know why they were disciplined. Is that correct? Pour quelle raison ils ont fait l'objet de ces mesures? Est-ce exact? Yes, that is correct. Réponse: Oui, c'est exact. Now, if that is correct, Madam Question. Witness, can you si explain exact, Madame to me why it was that you said to? the investigators Pourquoi that anyone au, not meeting the quota was penalized? Que, euh, de ne pas atteindre ou respecter le quota fixé était sanctionné. Yeah. Yeah. Did not for complete the work quota, or we were lazy in doing our work quota. We would be taken for refashioning. We would be threatened to be placed in a cage if we did not complete our quota. So we try our best, and usually we completed our work quota, and that's what happened because. We don't want to be used as a, a bad model for other nous workers, nous so we try our best to uh, complete the quota. Pour les 
I understand your answer, but I had asked you for co concrete examples of anybody who was in fact penalized for not meeting the quota. Um, so again, my question, did it in fact happen that somebody was penalized because he or she did not meet the required quota? If a worker can, could not complete a work quota during the daytime, that worker, and sometimes in my case it's myself, had to do the work at night. And that applied to everyone. Some workers could complete the work assignment during the daytime and could rest. But for, for others who could not do it during the daytime, then they had to continue doing it through the nighttime. Mr. President, I'm moving to another subject. I, I'm, I'm mindful of the time. Um, I think maybe it's an appropriate time to take a break. Est-il idoine pour une pause bah. President, it is now convenient for the lunch break. We take a break now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Court officer, please assist the witness at the waiting room for the witnesses and experts during the lunch break, lunch break and invite the witness as well as the TPRO staff back into the courtroom at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are instructed to take a kill some pawn through the waiting room downstairs and have him return to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess.